going on? Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show on DRF TV, live.drf.com, livestream.com, Daily Racing Forms Twitter handle at DRF Inside Post, as well as the Daily Racing Forms Facebook page. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. This is the preview. No, this is the recap edition. It's early in the week. Recap edition, going back, taking a look at two big graded stakes races from this past weekend. One at Gulfstream Park, one out at Santa Anita. We'll also give you the stakes montage with some quick hits, some thoughts about some of those races. The weekend's best as far as buyer speed figure performances are concerned. We'll get you out of here with what's on tap for DRF TV for the rest of the week as well. If you're over on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, however you get your podcast, please subscribe, write a review, leave us a rating. Uh, if you're over on YouTube, click that subscribe button. Make sure that bell icon is lit up so you get everything that DRF TV has to offer. Write a review. Do whatever you need to do. Comments, questions, concerns beneath the video player on YouTube or, again, on Twitter at Bernie or underscore Matt. Let's dive into it. The race down to Gulfstream we'll go over was the House Hope, a one-turn mile on the main track. Let's take a look at the field. Eight of them signed on. Post-time favorite was Breaking Lucky. Actually, the two favorites, almost co-choices, a 9-5 to five shot and a 2-1 to one shot, both exited the Fred W. Hooper, which was run at the end of January, a race that I was on record saying I didn't think was very good. But if you wanted to take anyone out of that race, perhaps it was Coppertown, simply because he may or may not have hit his head on the gate at the start of that. And you know what? You know on his best day he is capable of a big effort. But the other horses exiting that race, I just didn't think it was a quality event. But he did have some interesting fresh faces, particularly Quip coming off of a long layoff. Hadn't seen him since the Preakness last year. But you figured maybe with that no sort of natural progression from 3 to 4 coming off the bench, maybe he would be the one that would be able to get the job done. He ran well, but not well enough. It was one of Todd Pletcher's two entrants in here. Let's take a look at the stretch run of the Howl's Hope. Town after three quarters and 109 and one, they wheel in. It's a Pletcher showdown with an eighth of a mile to go. Fellowship tries to spoil the party with a late run down the stand side, but Prince Lucky is winning the battle with Copper Town and he's going to win the House Hope. It's Prince Lucky and John Velasquez moving clear in the end. They'll win by five. Second, Copper Town. Quip is third, up fourth. Prince Lucky prevails in a very emphatic fashion. Winning this race by six lengths over Coppertown, who was the second choice at odds of two to one, and the third choice at odds of nine to two was Quip running third behind Prince Lucky. Let's talk about Prince Lucky a little bit more. He's five of nine lifetime, seven times in the money, just over two hundred ninety-one thousand dollars in career earnings, owned by Daniel McConnell, trained by Todd Pletcher, bred by Daniel W. McConnell Sr. in Pennsylvania, ridden to victory by John Velasquez. You can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. He is by Corinthian, out of a great notion mare named Lucky Notion. This was a smashing effort from Prince Lucky, a 106 buyer. Uh, never looked like a loser at any point. He was out in the clear. It was a perfect trip, don't get me wrong. Uh, you need to do, take that into consideration as well. Parked out in the clear, never had any sort of issue, never had to overcome anything. Uh, but at the same time, he never looked like a loser at any point in this race. He was cruising along, looked very, very visually comfortable. John Velasquez didn't ask him to run until they get to the top of the stretch. And at that point, he kicked away from Coppertown very impressively. The 106, um, that to me, you know, I had said when I went over this race in the preview show last week that it felt like this was a division that it just, it, it, there was no, no giant miler. And, and perhaps here you are, perhaps Prince Lucky is going to be that horse going forward. Um, for perspective's sake, considering those top three, they were the three horses that were one, two, three throughout the running. So something you want to factor in. But when you look and see how fast Coppertown and Quip came home in their final quarter miles and compare that to Prince Lucky, uh, you're talking about a horse that was just on a different level. Uh, you take a look at Coppertown, he came home in 2665. Quip came home in 2642. Uh, Prince Lucky came home in 2561. I mean, we're talking about essentially five lengths faster than what any of these other two horses did. So visually very impressive effort from Prince Lucky. Todd Pletcher has said um, that a, a quote from him was, I would say Prince Lucky would look at the Gulfstream Park Mile on Florida Derby Day if he bounces out of it well, meaning this race. Um, and he also made a, a sort of a, a passing quote or a passing comment about the idea that this may just be a starting off point for him from a distance standpoint. Maybe he does get to try two turns at some point down the road. Uh, I would love to see if this is sort of the progression that we're going on. If he goes to a race like the Gulfstream Park Mile, which would be at the end of next month uh, or at the beginning of April, one of the two, um, I, I would look at that and say, okay, you've run him well there. Do you put him away until the Metropolitan Handicap if he runs well there? 
then are you thinking bigger? Are you thinking down the road? Do you try a race like the Whitney at Saratoga? Do you try some of those events? Um, that's how impressive this effort was from Prince Lucky. And in a division where it feels like, and not just the milers, I can I can expand this to just the older horses in general. There are no superstars right now. This is a division that's ripe for the taking. Maybe Prince Lucky is going to be that kind of horse that can show up and sort of grab the bull by the horns. As far as Coppertown is concerned, uh, 96 buyer speed figure. I don't have any time form U.S. ratings for either of these two races that I'm going to go over. Um, at Coppertown with a 96 buyer, it was a solid effort, but there are reasons to believe, at least in my opinion, that we're trending the wrong direction. Now, the Cigar Mile, he didn't get away great. He got pinched back, and he came with a nice mid-move flattened out. I don't want to hold that against him. It was off of a little bit of a layoff as well. He comes back in that Fred W. Hooper, and again, I made mention, he may or may not have hit his head on the gate, and I don't want to hold that race against him, considering there's a chance that, you know, he just wasn't all there. He had a little bit of scrambled brain. Um, this race here, he stumbles badly out of the gate, and he's forced to be used early to establish that position. And now we're looking at it, and I'm saying, okay, this is three starts in a row that this horse hasn't gotten out of the gate particularly well. Uh, he did rebound and was able to go on, and he, p he put Quip away, so that's a positive. But then turn him for home. He never changes leads at any point down the lane. He looked like a tired horse getting choppy at the end. You know, I, I couldn't help but look at him now and say, all right, we might be trending the wrong way with him. He might be going off form. But if you are saying that, you know what, the 96 buyer is still faster than what a lot of horses are capable of running. From a raw talent standpoint, Coppertown's always had it. The question is, can you keep them together? And now, can you get him out of the gate uh, sort of alertly? I do wonder if this is going to be a horse that maybe you look at a race like the Carter Handicap. I haven't read anything, but I would say the Carter at 7 eighths, a slight turn back in distance. Uh, last year's Carter, I, I look, Army Mule ran a hole in the wind, but in recent years, the Carter has been hit or miss as far as quality is concerned. If you think Coppertown can get you a 96 buyer, I would imagine that's going to put him as one of the contenders in a race like the Carter, should they choose to go that route. If they choose to go somewhere else, so be it. But I wonder if Coppertown, you take a shot with that race and you hope that that's actually the thing that you can get, get that big win for him. And then at that point, you know what, let's give him a little bit of a breather and, and plan ahead from there, plan accordingly. Quip, um, I wrote about it on DRF Live on Saturday. I, I don't, I, to be honest, I don't know how good he is or isn't. It, the, the sample size for him from a running standpoint was so small going into this race that I, I think the jury was still out. How good was he actually? You know when he's allowed to go out there and do everything on his own, like he did in the Tampa Bay Derby, he can look very, very nice. And I know he sat off of a target. He didn't actually cut out all the fractions. But um, and then you look at the, the Arkansas Derby, he ran fine there, but he was no match for Magnum Moon, and I made mention that that race as a whole just left a lot to be desired. I'm not going to hold the Preakness against him, but he comes back here, and he basically runs, from a number standpoint, the same kind of race he ran early as a three-year-old, a 94. Doesn't mean he can't improve, and I expect him to improve. Perhaps getting to two turns is going to be better for him. Um, it just, I, I, I still don't know how good I actually think Quip is. I think he's a nice horse. But is he a grade one caliber runner? I don't know. I think it's a little bit too early to tell. My my gut feeling says no. But you know what? Again, it's early, and he can certainly take a step forward here wherever his next start is. As far as the rest of the field is concerned, I didn't think there was a heck of a lot going on. I know Tale of Silence picked up some pieces late, and he was really one of the only horses doing any running at the end. But, I, again, he just, to me, feels more like an underneath kind, underneath kind of nibbler. Uh, Fellowship made a nice big bold move, and then he just flattened out. That's basically fellowship in a nutshell. Breaking luck, he was terrible. You hope everything's okay with him. Uh, Mr. Jordan, you do wonder. He just clearly loves Gulfstream Park West. Uh, and Sir Anthony, Sir Anthony ran his race. You know, a 92 buyer, that was a forward move for him technically, but um, I, I, I just don't know that I'm really sold on him as a, as a true graded stakes kind of runner. Uh, maybe a listed stake or a grade three type, but um, really, there was one horse in this race that stood out head and shoulders above everyone else afterward anyway. Uh, Prince Lucky, visually awesome, winning this year's Hal's, Hal's Hope with a 106 buyer. Sounds like it could be onto the Gulfstream Park mile. And then to me, I'd look at it and wonder, do you start seeing races if he continues trending this direction? Do you see the Metropolitan Handicap? And then maybe do you stretch him out and do you see him in a race like the Whitney over the summer at Saratoga? Time will tell, but right now, you know you got a nice horse here. Prince Lucky with a 106 buyer. And the main event out at Santa Anita on Saturday was the Buena Vista for Phillies and Mares going a mile on the grass. Let's take a look at that field. There was a heavy favorite in here, deservedly so. 
Vasilika for Jerry Hollendorfer. She was bet down to odds of four to five in a field of nine. She's just been rock solid ever since Hollendorfer claimed her for $40,000. She's become a grade one winner, a multiple graded stakes winner over different distances at different tracks. You name it, she is capable of doing it. Forwardly placed coming from off of it. She deserved to be the favorite, and she did not disappoint. Here's the stretch run of the Buena Vista. Luck is also firing a big shot outside of her. They're at the top of the stretch. Fahan Mura, Vasilika motoring down the center of the course as Miss Bad Behavior gets the lead. But here's Vasilika storming home in the center of the course. And Vasilika's streak of luck continues a nice rally into second. But Vasilika, the story just keeps getting better as she wins the Buena Vista. 94 buyer speed figure. For Vasilika getting the job done as the 4-5 to five favorite. Streak of luck, the longest shot on the board. Really impressive effort from her to finish second at odds of 53-1. to one. And your third place finisher, Ms. Bad Behavior, at odds of 7-1. to one. Let's take a look at Vasilika. She's won half of her 30 lifetime starts. Seven other times she's been in the money. Just under $940,000 in career earnings, owned by All Schlock Racing, uh, excuse me, All Schlock Stables LLC, Hollendorfer LLC, Gato Racing LLC, and Todaro. Trained by Jerry Hollendorfer, bred by Mikhail Yanikov in Kentucky. Written to victory by Flavia and Pratt, and you can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. She is by Skip Shot out of a marquetry merit named La Belle Marquette. Again, the 94 buyer for Vasilika. This is on par with her. She is a mid 90 kind of horse. She shows up and just delivers her run no matter what. She's rock solid, and it's it must have been at least a, a mild bright spot on a sad day for the Hollendorfer barn. Uh, well documented already at, the, at this point now with unfortunate situation with Battle of Midway breaking down uh, on Saturday morning and needing to be euthanized. So the Hollendorfer barn had heavy hearts going into this, but hopefully Vasilika did a little bit to lift their spirits. Uh, she is just a professional racehorse. She shows up and runs. It doesn't matter what is thrown at her. Uh, and it sounds like there's a little bit of a plan already being mapped out for her. She'll be pointed to the Royal Heroine out at Santa Anita on April the 6th. And that could be a springboard or a stepping stone to a race on the Kentucky Derby weekend, Kentucky Derby undercard on May 4th, uh, the Churchill Downs Distaff, which was a mile race for the Phillies and Mares. So could be bigger and better things and potentially some travel for Vasilika coming up here in the upcoming months. Uh, again, I, look, she's just awesome. She just shows up and runs. Doesn't matter what the conditions, doesn't matter the distance, the surface, where she's going. And I say surface, meaning track. Um, and just from a running style standpoint, she can come from way out of it. She can be forwardly placed. Uh, she's just a really cool horse. She came, she got her final quarter mile in 2286. Uh, streak of luck came home in 2277. She earned a 91 buyer as the longest shot on the board. Now, it must be admitted that there was a hot pace in here. Fahan Mora, whenever she is in a race, you know what her game is. It's speed, speed, speed. Today, no different. 22-2 and two for the opening quarter, 45-2 and two for the half, 9-1 and one for three quarters, and they stopped the clock in 33-1. and one. This was just a hot effort all around. Um, I think Ms. Bad Behavior ran sneaky well in here. She earned an 88 buyer. I understand, and myself included, I'm starting to look at her as more of a nibbler. But when you consider she was closest to Fahan Murray, and when I say closest, you take that with a grain of salt. Fahan Murray at one point was five lengths clear of the field. But she was the one that was in closest attendance. She eventually took over at one point at the top of the lane, and she just got run over by two horses coming from well out of it. She stuck around. She was getting a little bit short and choppy at the end, but she still finished in 23.68, and she had thrown down herself a number of sub-24 quarter miles. You know, I, I just kind of feel like this is probably a little bit better than it looks. The problem for her is... Probably going to run into Vasilika again in your next race. Going down the hill, she's good. I don't know if she's as good as she is at a flat mile. Um, you know, there's she's a horse that will make money for the connections, no question. Uh, she's probably a little bit... Hmm. I don't want to say class compromise. That's not the that's not what I'm looking for. She's just probably a notch below the best of the best. She's really talented. She's a nice filly, or, and there are spots for her. But I just do wonder if perhaps this is a little bit too much. Uh, take these chains, a fine effort in Southern California, N not a terrible effort by any stretch of the imagination. She was relatively close as well. Uh, she couldn't get over the hump. Uh, Amandine, I guess it was a little bit of a better effort than what we've seen. I just do wonder if that three-day turnaround in late December, did that take a little bit of the starch out of her? Elysia's World in her first start for New Connections in Southern California you know, I, you can sit there and say, oh, well, she came from last and it's going to be difficult to make up that kind of ground. Well, Vasilika and Streak of Luck came from 7th and 8th. So to me, there's a, a scenario where you just look at it and say, maybe Elysia's World's just not as good as some of those other horses. 
I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. She was coming off of a bit of a layoff. Hasn't seen her since October. That was a tough effort up at Woodbine going a distance she doesn't really want. Um, I, I suppose she could move forward, but those of us familiar with her on the East Coast know she's Elysia's world. And, you know, she's no superstar by any stretch. I'm sure she can improve. Can she improve enough to really be a threat in this division? Uh, we'll find out in time. Uh, compelled, I long maintain she is better short going shorter distances on turf, whether it's down the hill, whether it's six furlongs at Laurel, whether it's five and a half somewhere else, I would ship her out of town. And Fahan Mura, you know, she's she's been in good form for a while, but now this is a few consecutive kind of subpar efforts, and I wonder, I don't think you change the running style, but I do wonder if she's just one of those fillies at this point or a five-year-old mare. Does she just need a breather? She need a little bit of a break, refresh, get her ready to go for a race in May or June, something like that. Just my two cents. But uh, Vasilika, we know what she is. She is rock solid. She is consistent. She can take her game anywhere, and she can do anything. She gets the job done for Hollendorfer and company in the Buena Vista with a 94 buyer speed figure. We're going to cut to this week's stakes montage. When we go through that, I will come back, give you some quick hits and thoughts on a couple of those races, and then we'll roll it right in to the weekend's best as far as buyer speed figure performances are concerned. So without further ado, here is this week's stakes montage. Quarter of a mile to do it in as they wheel in. It's play on into the front by two and a half. Just ain't right. Tries to get after a second. A late run from Ginger Nut down the sand side. Final eighth of a mile and play on is running on. Play on and Sean Bridgemahan and a gate to wire win in the Melody of Colors. That win by three. Up second. Catch a thrill. Close after that. Left to go. Four. Off the turn in the stretch drive. Gladiator King comes away with the lead. From the back, it's running on Jackson. Not the favorite stand up. Jackson's the one who's erupting late. Final eighth of a mile. Jackson and the Red Blinkers tries to get to Yes, I am free who just took the lead. Yes, I am free with the win. Jackson is second. It's closer for third. Either our boy. They boy. turn for home now. The half and 46 seconds. Stones in the road. Flush on the outside. They're moving for the eighth pole. Stones in the road has a two and a half length lead. Flush is second. Wadadley Princess has now moved into third. Stones in the road is going to make it three for three in her young career. Stones in the road, a front-running score under Rajiv Mirage. It was close for second between Flush and Wadadley Prince. That third derby by a length and a half and got further ahead and shot three in front. Down the outside, Wicked indeed, and battling away is Walker Stalker. Hustle up in front, Wicked indeed going to second, but it is Hustle up well and truly out in front. Wicked indeed coming now, but it's still Hustle up by two and a half in the mind, that bird derby. A thousandth training wins of thoroughbreds. Todd Finch has got it. Hustle up from Wicked indeed. Walker Red Stroh's Walker. is running on, and then KP Slick and Blessings first is last. Battling back to that way. On the outside, Victim of Love, the center to that way. And down the outside, Backflash and Parade of Roses. As they come down the lane, it's Victim of Love getting clear. And Victim of Love with great acceleration. Two clear, now three. And Victim of Love by a length and a three quarters to Backflash in the That's island. That's the quarter pole and turn for home. Show it and mow it on the outside. And S.Y. Sky, S.Y. Sky has a narrow lead with a furlong left to go. Show it and mow it's a half length behind. Then it's Coco Kisses in third. A 16th to go. SY Sky. Show it and mow it. Comes back on the outside. Show it and mow it. Will win the spring fever. She and SY Sky. Not a ton for me to add as far as the stakes montage is concerned. Just a couple of quick thoughts. The Melody of Colors play on. She blitzed the field. Usually those 5 eighths turf races. Speed is always very dangerous. You'd rather be on the front than trying to come from way out of it. Uh, the one thing I would say is you probably want to give Ginger Nut the benefit of the doubt because she checked hard going into the first turn, or the far turn, excuse me. Uh, keep in mind, this is her first start in the United States. This was a situation where John Sadler shipped her from California out to South Florida, coming off a little bit of a layoff, and then she did rally on at the end. So I think you want, to me, that was a little bit better than maybe it looks for Ginger Nut. Maybe she's one you want to keep an eye on. Uh, Sunland on Sunday afternoon, the island fashion, just an oddly run race in general. Um, at one point, the early pace setter ended up being last and then rallied on. And on the flip side, the horse that was trailing early ended up making a nice little sort of knifing move down the backside to get into a perfect stalking position and ultimately went on to get the job done. It just, it, I don't know that I want to say anyone was awesome or not in that race, but it just, and very oddly run race where horses that were forward ended up falling back and then coming on again and horses that were back early, they made these sort of early-ish moves 
to establish position and went on with it. As far as the mind that bird derby is concerned, you have to just wonder about the quality, in my opinion. Um, Hustle Up is a nice horse, don't get me wrong. But he's pulling early. He's setting legitimate fractions, and no one can come and get him. Now, look, he's solid, but we have seen, from a speed figure standpoint, he just really hadn't gotten all that much faster. He likes to win races, and that's something that you, you obviously need to tip the cap to. But when I look at that and I see a horse like Wicked Indeed, who's just kind of going up and down, and sure, he made up a little bit of ground late, but... Wicked indeed. You just have to look at it and say, if you couldn't get the job done in a situation like this with the class relief, you're probably just not that good, and you're probably not a derby contender. You're probably going to be able to look for some of these smaller awards here and there, but you're not really a horse that needs to be viewed as a contender on the road to the Kentucky Derby, in my opinion. As far as Hustle Up is concerned, I would imagine you go on to the Sunland Derby. You take your chance there. If it works, hey, look, more power to you. Go on with it. I just think that we're probably looking at a pretty weak field coming out of that Mind That Bird Derby. And then Spring Fever on Sunday out at Santa Anita. They put on a show the two big girls did, uh, S.Y. Sky and Show It and Mow It. Show It and Mow It is just genuine. She's very game. I thought for a minute maybe Bejarano got a little bit too cute, leaving that big opening on the inside for S.Y. Sky to go through. But once Show It and Mow It kind of saw that we had a little bit of a fight on our hands, she dug in gamely and went on with it. Um, and that's the kind of race that makes me look at it and say, SY Sky is not going to beat Show It and Mow It on the main track. On turf, totally different game. And I said it in the stakes preview. I think SY Sky is considerably better on grass than she is on dirt. But having said that, it's still not trying to take anything away from Show It and Mow It. She's just a nice, nice horse that likes to get into a dogfight and get the job done. Uh, let's throw it into the weekend's best as far as buyers are concerned. Take them right in order. The three-year-old males on dirt. Mr. Moneybags in 89 in a stakes race down at Sam Houston. Three-year-old fillies on dirt. Stones in the road. You saw her win the Franklin Square with a 78 at Aqueduct. Three-year-old males on grass. We saw the Texas Glitter. Yes, I am free. Earned an 80 buyer. Play On, who we just spoke about. She was the highest earning three-year-old filly on turf. Uh, 84 buyer in the Melody of Colors. Older males on dirt. Prince Lucky, we talked about him at the top of the 106 in the Hal's Hope. Older fillies and mares on dirt. Chocolate Martini, non-winners of two other than down at Oaklawn Park. She earns a very solid figure. And older males on turf. All right, and what's on the agenda? 93 buyers each. One coming at the fairgrounds. One coming at Santa Anita. And older fillies and mares on the turf. Vasilika, we know what her game is. A 94 buyer winning the Buena Vista out at Santa Anita. There you have it, the weekend's best as far as buyer speed figure performances are concerned. DRF TV schedule of events, big weekend coming up here. Fountain of Youth Saturday down at Gulfstream. We're going to have a number of stakes races. All of those will be in previews. I would imagine the Fountain of Youth is the Saturday DRF bets race of the day. You will have all sorts of good things. The latest edition of Out of the Gate. You'll have the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show. You will have pedigree reports. You'll have Derby Watch. You'll have all sorts of great stuff. Uh, Video.drf.com as well as the Daily Racing Forms YouTube channel is where you want to be for all that and then some. If you've been listening live, thanks for doing so. Uh, podcast, though, like most of you, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, Spotify, however you get them. Subscribe, write a review, leave a rating. Do the same over on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, make sure the bell icon is lit up. Uh, questions, comments, concerns beneath the video player on YouTube or on Twitter, at Bernier underscore Matt. And for that matter, just give me a follow over there on Twitter if you're curious to see what else is coming out uh, for the rest of the week. Again, we'll have all those good things on tap. I'll be back again with the preview edition coming up at the end of the week, probably going over one of those stakes races from down in South Florida on Saturday afternoon. Until that time, best of luck however you play, whatever you play, wherever you play. This has been the recap edition of the Matt Bernier Show.